Watch this. Dozens have been protesting the lack of affordable housing in Boise for weeks by camping in below freezing temperatures near the Idaho State House. But this morning, Idaho State Police Troopers showed up to have a conversation and take action. We explain what they did and did not do there. It's Friday, so we're calling back the biggest story of the week, claims of critical race theory in pre-K curriculum. We're getting to some of your comments and insight on this hot topic issue. The Olympic Winter Games officially kick off tonight, but the KTVB Office Olympics are already underway. Come along as we show you the fight for glory here at Channel 7. Boy, we got a special half hour for you here on Friday. We'll start with this, though. If you've passed the old Ada County Courthouse anytime over the last three weeks, you've probably noticed a cluster of tents on the lawn. It's pretty hard to miss, but if you have, we're going to show you some video. We've continuously reported on this demonstration. We've learned that many of the demonstrators here belong to a group calling themselves Boise Mutual Aid. The group is asking the city of Boise to provide more resources to help people facing homelessness in Boise. Idaho State Police has walked through the demonstration before, but this morning they did something else other than just walk through. State Police troopers removed trash and other items they say are a reflection of a camp not a demonstration and Andrew Bartline joined us and Andrew you've covered this demonstration over the past few weeks for us is what's happening on the lawn legal there meaning are people just allowed to put up their tents and can ISP just walk through and start taking items. Well, these seem at odds with each other, but both can legally happen. A federal court order allows symbolic tents for demonstration like this on state property. However, the nuance resides in that phrase symbolic. The tents, signs, and expression of speech are fair game under the court order. However, the act of camping is prohibited. ISP says the purpose of their visit was to check for any prohibited items, whether that be universally legal items like drugs, or items that show that this is a camp, not a demonstration. Things like sleeping bags, pillows, even propane tanks. We met a neighbor across the street who was once homeless himself. He says he supports the demonstrators, but spoke candidly about what he saw this morning and over the past few weeks. They came around, they were mulling around, and they started reaching in people's tents, bagging them up in garbage sacks, their, their sleeping bags, just their sleeping bags. Like I said, some girl thought that they were um, getting rid of the homeless people, and I was like, these people are wearing like Patagonia and stuff. Have you ever seen a homeless person? <laughs> they don't look like that. They don't have nice tents. She was like, oh, well, people donated the tents. I was like, no. Nah. And these people, when they camp out at night, they got their cars along the street. And uh, they're really nice cars, a lot of them. Really? These people get up in the morning, they go home, they get ready for the day, go to work. So you're not convinced that all the people here are homeless? None of them. None of them are homeless. That's Chad, the man living across the street. He estimates around 30 ISP officers were on scene this morning cleaning up the lawn. And that aligns with our photojournalist, uh, his estimation, who was on scene at that time as well. ISP says troopers removed unclaimed property, garbage, feces, vomit. They said what appeared to look like bottles of urine and food waste. We tried to speak with demonstrators, but none were interested speaking with us about their encounter with ISP this morning. ISP reports troopers arrested four people at the demonstration. Three had warrants for failure to appear on previous misdemeanor charges, and one of them, uh, they are not facing a new offense. The fourth, however, um, it was a Boise man. He had a warrant out for a probation violation. The demonstration is not shut down to be clear. ISP says they removed what was not allowed and explained to the demonstrators what they can and can't do legally for this demonstration on state property. Joe. So Andrew, real quickly, I just want to clarify. I've seen claims online saying, okay, they cleared everyone out. It's blank at the Ada County Courthouse, the old Ada County Courthouse right next to the state capitol. I know you're not there right now, but are there still tents and stuff up? I was there a couple hours ago and there were Plenty of tents up. Uh, ISP did not remove any tents. They say they did not remove any tents, and then the demonstrators claimed that their tents were removed either. So um, the demonstration is still in place. It's moved further down on the lawn, um, but it, it's still in place. Well, good to know, and I know, Andrew, you'll be keeping an eye on this as it goes on. That's Andrew Bartline reporting for us on the 208. Thank you. This bill is officially law. <laughs> 
Well, there you have it. You heard Governor Little himself. The major Idaho tax cut bill is now signed into law. The bill, touted by Republican lawmakers as the biggest tax cut in state history, fits in with Governor Little's outline in the State of the State Address and his leading Idaho plan. Now, this newly signed bill brings $350 million in one-time tax relief in the form of tax rebate checks that will be sent to Idahoans this spring. The rebate for Idahoans will be 12% of state income taxes returned for filers during 2020 or $75 per taxpayer independent, whatever amount is greater. Full details on your screen right there. Now, the bill also includes $251 million in ongoing tax relief with the consolidation of tax brackets and lowering of income tax rates for all Idahoans. The bill consolidates Idaho's income tax brackets from five down to four and lowers both the corporate income tax rate and the highest income individual tax rate down to 6%. Previously, it was 6.5%. Governor Little touted the bill and surrounding circumstances as a major success while speaking at his bill signing. The three things that, that have been priorities for me, they're priority for our leading Idaho initiative, is significant tax relief, record investments in education, and record investments in transportation. Those were all somewhat aspirational goals. I just didn't think we'd get them all done at once. Important to note that critics of the tax bill say that it is the wrong move with nearly $2 billion in state surplus dollars. Lawmakers, primarily Democrats, argue that the money could be better utilized by investing into things like education, infrastructure, or property tax relief. Now, this isn't the end-all, be-all for tax legislation this year. Lawmakers are expected to address the property tax issue that many Idahoans continue to struggle with. Also a possibility that the grocery tax is discussed. We will see, though. It is wait and see. An interesting note that I was considering, though, this afternoon, and maybe you keep this in mind, it'll be interesting in a year from now to see how this tax cut is really viewed statewide. So we'll keep an eye on this, and it'll be interesting to see how it's perceived as history goes goes along. Another big story this week happened on Monday at the State House. Representative Dorothy Moon of Stanley questioned Idaho State Board of Education President Kirk Liebick during a House education meeting about a $6 million early childhood education grant that failed in the legislature because some lawmakers claimed it would give funds to districts that have critical race theory in their curriculum. Uh, Representative Moon then made claims that critical race theory is a part of pre-K curriculum at a Boise County school district. Yes, I, I mean, uh, there obviously was. I worked with one of those cohorts down in uh, Boise County, and I did see the curriculum that was being brought in, and, and it, was, um, it was very much CRT. So, so I'm just saying, in, in the future, it would be wonderful if you could screen some of the ties to this grant money and what is being expected of our educators to put forth be before these little kids. Uh, because if you were to go back and look at the hearing, you would probably see there was a lot of CRT materials that were being provided to these school districts. So it is there. But is it? That's the major question here. We reached out to all three districts in Boise County, Basin, Garden Valley, and Horseshoe Bend. All three strongly denied Moon's claims of critical race theory in their curriculum. We spoke with the elementary school principal and superintendent of the Basin School District in Idaho City. They say they believe the comments are directed towards them specifically as they are the ones using funds from that now discontinued federal grant. She never came up here to review it. She did not request any of the materials. According to the letter, you spoke with Representative Moon about this a while ago or last year about this. Yes, during the last legislative session, um, I contacted her in February prior to all of this actually coming up just to see if she wanted to come on site and look through those items to see if she had you know any concerns about what we were using. And she didn't? She did not. I think it's a major distraction and disinformation. It's just, um, I, don't, I don't know what other purpose there is. And you can, I think you could probably go in every single preschool in the whole state and you're not gonna find anything. So that's Brian Hunicki. He's the superintendent of the district and he told us that in his four years there, no parent has ever asked to see any part of the curriculum. Zero, no parents at all. But they say it is available and open for anyone to see. 
And as you can imagine, we've gotten a lot of comments and questions about this exchange from our viewers, you at home, and we weren't able to really dive into the full conversation earlier this week. So let's get into it now. The pulse of the people. We'll start with this. Paula says, quote, I want to thank the school superintendents for revealing Representative Moon's CRT claims as false and baseless. I hope that she stops spreading this nonsense and fear mongering and apologizes for her actions. And Paula, we've reached out to Representative Moon several times in the hopes of asking her about those claims, where she came up with the idea, why she believes that. As of now, we have not heard back from her, but Representative Moon, if you're watching, we'd still love to talk with you. Uh, some other comments coming in from viewers. Brad says, Representative Moon's baseless ac accusations should not go uninvestigated by her peers, even if she retracts, the curiosity of her motive remains. And Brad, her peers did notice, at least one of them, sitting next to her during that committee hearing was Representative Julie Yamamoto of Caldwell. She's actually a former teacher and school administrator, and we talked with her this week to get her take on this situation. Well, here's the thing about Representative Moon. She absolutely believes what she's saying. There is no guile there. She believes that these are, it is a present, real and present danger and is something that needs to be rooted out. And she is convinced, as are some other of my colleagues, that this is rampant. I don't see the evidence. And I guess, well, we'll go back to our poker. Show me the money. I mean, I'm just not seeing it. If you're interested, all of our interviews with the people you just heard from are up on KTVB.com and you can hear more from them. And finally, though, I want to get to one last comment. This one comes from Tammy saying, quote, seems if teachers were indoctrinating kids, they would indoctrinate them to sit still and be quiet. And Tammy, I think every parent and every school teacher and maybe administrator would like to be able to agree with you that they would all like to be able to convince the kids to sit still and be quiet sometimes. But as you know, some of those elementary school classes are pretty lively. The Olympics are here and KTVB is your official home for all the incredible action and stories. But before we get to primetime Olympic coverage tonight, the KTVB team is taking on a battle of our own, the Office Olympics. What does that even mean? Put it this way, don't change your channel. Any Olympic memories you hold dear? Tell us about it. Text into our special line, 208-321-5614. Be sure to include your name in the hashtag, the 208. We love your comments, questions, concerns, pictures, recipes, haikus, anything at all. And at the end of the hour, we will be reading some of your comments live. So stay tuned. We'll be back soon. If you haven't heard, the Olympics are back, and KTVB is your home for everything Olympics in Team USA. Jay Tust, Will Hall, our sports guys, have got some awesome stuff for you this month, so stay locked in right here on 7. 
Tonight, though, NBC has an awesome look at the games and, of course, some major opening ceremonies. But before we get there in prime time, we wanted to wet your Olympic palate. The KTVB News team is taking on the KTVB marketing team in a special office Olympics, because why not? And guess what? You at home, you're going to get a front row seat right here on the 208 Friday edition. We start tonight, though, with opening ceremonies and our first Olympic contest, trash can basketball. The KTVB Office Olympics feature the best in office sporting. In our first competition, news and marketing will square off in a game of trash can basketball. Two athletes will be attempting trick shots using a crumpled up piece of paper and a trash can. Typical horse rules apply with players calling their shots Bambino style and their opponent must replicate their made shots or receive a letter. The first contestant to spell out KTVB loses. On the news side, Joe Paris, AKA the Eiffel Tower of Power will compete. Parlay boo trash talk. The challenger for marketing is Shane Saw Woodland. -in 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 -in. This lefty can really cut through the competition, leaving piles of sawdust to soak up their tears. I'm really looking forward to seeing how this one plays out in the cubicles today. One sheet of paper, regulation, paper balls. All right, here we Let's go. See what you got, Shane. Oh, Damn. no. Oh, no. It's K for Joe. This could be fast. This could be really fast. Remember where you were. I was right here. <laughs> Swish. Ooh. Ooh. Tied to K. A K. Tied to K. All right. K for me. Uh oh. Oh no! I hear the hardware coming out. This is a big moment for the sport. Ooh, I like I like where you're at though. <laughs> I like where your head's at. I think I'll try it. Oh. Oh. See, I like that shot. It's gonna happen. Why is that so hard? There it is. All right, one rebuttal. Oh, all right. K. Hey, I got T now. It's a little leaning against the table action. We need to get some. We need to get some going down here. Why? Shane, it went in. Nothing but that. Let's put a. Let's put it where Mom put the cookie jar. We call this Top Shelf Special. No, just a little free throw action. You know, you gotta make your free throws. Ooh. Oh, that one's gone forever. Nope. No dice. No dice. There it is. Free throw. It's in the, it's in the hole. Oh. Off the rim. All right, we are def locked at T. All right, we call this UFO above Boise. Oh boy, we're on the cusp of something big. There's only one way this ends, Shane. I call this long look down from the top. And as I reflect on this great day, Shane, I realize you're gonna to be too tall for this challenge and you will for sure hit your head. But that's not my problem. Ooh. Swish. You are seated? You can do whatever you need. <laughs> Here we go. Oh. oh! Oh! Well, we knew it was gonna happen. Shane, I hope you enjoyed the yes. view up there. It's a nice consolation prize. The real winners that will be getting medals. Congratulations. Thank you. COVID. Handshake. There you go. Yeah! We did it! We're going to state championships! Yeah! 
Thanks for humoring us, I should say. We've got some more Office Olympics coming up next week. Competitive typing, laps around the building, paper airplane making. You'll be able to see it all here on the 208, so the marketing team can bring it on. But if you're in the mood to watch real athletes, the Olympics right here, your home on, uh, on KTVB. Tune in at 6 p.m. right here on 7. We've got the gorgeous, beautiful opening ceremonies. You don't want to miss it again. The only place you can watch the Olympics in town is here on 7. We'll be right back. Snow is beautiful in the mountains there in Idaho. Here's a look at the valley and the overcast that we have for late this afternoon. Here's another view with the future cast looking at the small storm system that's to our north. McCall may get a few light snow flurries. Probably nothing here in the valley. On the back side of this, clears out easily between about 8 to 10 o'clock for tonight, which means we're out for sunshine. That's going to be coming our way for tomorrow. Still be a few clouds around. But as we start in the morning, expect some cold temperatures down in the 20s. But then as you notice, we're going to be getting probably 36 to about 38 degrees for tomorrow. And I think there's quite a bit of sunshine in the afternoon. And in your seven day forecast, a lot of sunshine continuing in the next week. And even some of these temperatures gradually getting up to around 40 degrees or so, only because we're getting a little longer days now as we move into the month of February. Hey, back to the side so you can see this. Uh, and because of that, we're getting about an hour yeah, longer in length of the days, so it's heating things up a little bit. We're going to notice that as we get into next week. All right, thank you very much, Rick. Well, here on the 208, we love to hear from all of you at home. And this morning, we got a great message and a nice reminder of how a small act of kindness can make a big impact in someone's life. Here it is. 
Kathleen Kreiner Wood sent us this picture of her four year old son meeting a Boise police officer. She says her son is amazed by police. They stopped by the police station and got to meet an officer who took a few minutes out of his day to talk to him and he gave the boy some Boise police swag. Later on, she sent us some pictures and they went to the Boise Fire Department off of Five Mile. Firefighters let him climb on the truck and they also got to get some stuffed animals and other goodies there. Kathleen tells us that they had a blast and they share her appreciation of the first responders small gesture of kindness that made her son's day. I have a strong feeling that her son may end up being a firefighter or a police officer one day. We'll have to keep an eye out. All right, fan favorite to end the show. We're gonna lead, uh, read some of your comments live here. This person says, we need to get the tent people off of our old capital grounds. There is places for them to live. If they cannot live in those places, turn yourself in and get cleared to live in homeless shelters. A lot of opinions coming in. We'll see what happens next week over at the old Ada County Courthouse. This person says, why can't Joe hit jumpers like during pickup? I'm way better, I guess, with the basketball than with the piece of paper. That's what we learned here today. This one says, love the hashtag the 208, but your KTVB Olympics are awesomely lame. Thank you. And we will have some more, you know, tailored versions coming up in a few weeks. Olympics at six here on KTVB.